without ado, then let's, um, I'm going to give Crystal a little bit more time. So let's go ahead and call the meeting to order then. So we'll, uh, we'll start off with a, a roll call of economic development. This is Tuesday, November the 24th. All right. Lauren Edens. Here. Teresa Clark. Here. Katie Dadwell. Here. Mike Gilani. Not here. Um, Crystal McHune. Maybe coming soon. <laughs> Tracy Nine. Here. Um, Dave Bertolino. Here. John Pope. Not here. Okay. Okay. So can I get a motion on the floor to approve the October minutes? I'll make that motion. Made by Council Member Dodwell, seconded by Council Member Clark. Do we have any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, yes, all those okay. in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any against? All right, meeting's passed. Uh, do we have anybody from the public? No, ma'am. All right, moving on to our ready for action items. Uh, Julian uh, did a, a pretty great summary uh, for the COVID support that we've done. And, and we've all been aware because we've talked about that, certainly in the committee, it was, it was nice to have that summarized in one document. Um, what I would love to look for tonight would be a motion to forward that to council for the next work session. Made by council member Dodwell. Okay, seconded by council member Nyhan. Do we have any discussion on the motion? And since the motion is about the document, if, you, if you'd like to discuss that or ask Julian any questions, now would be the time. Oh, Katie, you're on mute. I just want to compliment Julian. It's a very concise, clear document. So um, I think it's important that we share that with the community at large. So I would, I would recommend that we also maybe put this in the uh, Wildwood Gazette at some point, um, just to indicate the kind of work that was done to help the businesses within Wildwood. So all of our residents know that that work was done. So maybe perhaps more abbreviated in bullet form. And if there's no objection, let's roll that into the main motion. Okay. Seeing none, um, all those in favor of forwarding this to council, putting it on the work session and summarizing and form on the next gazette, say aye. 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 Any opposed, any against? The motion carries. All right, so now we're on to the broader topic of sharing committee items with the council in general. I would um, love to see a motion to have the Economic Development Committee's report included um, basically once a month or every two meetings as, as the calendar, calendar goes for the council's work session. If someone would like to make a motion to effect, uh, made by Council Member Bertolino, seconded by Council Member Clark. Do we have any discussion on the item? I, I was a, a little embarrassed. I didn't know we weren't sending those to the council. I guess I didn't uh, didn't realize that. Uh, so this mm -hmm. is a good move. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, and uh, I, I think probably why it maybe didn't sink in for all of us is we've had updates on specific topics mm -hmm. like the holiday event or the veterans business, but not as a, as a standard committee. So sometimes when you're, mm -hmm. when you're in the middle of already discussing it or learning about it, it's, it's easy to forget that uh, it's, we needed to educate other council members on, on what we do on a normal basis. So. Mm -hmm. Council member Clark. Um, I just had a question about that. What, what, uh, I didn't understand what the reasoning was behind not doing. To the best of my knowledge, um, the items were not provided to the council to begin with. The former state administrator prior to Sam, Ryan Thomas and I uh, originally asked if the manager's report, that monthly report could be provided to council. And it was for a period of about eight or nine months. And I, I, I don't know the exact reason, but I know at a certain point, Ryan told me it was um, we were requested not to include it any longer. Um, I think some items are when there's a specific item that requires council approval, or if a certain committee member or the chair of the committee requests a certain item to be forwarded just for information, but it's not a, a, just a standard operating procedure to send all of our approved reports or monthly reports to council at this time uh, in the same way that it might be for the other two standing committees. I, I think the answer, Tracy, there was a time back then when 
there was still resistance to mm -hmm. economic development. And there were certain members of the council who basically wanted to bury us. Yes, uh, thank you, David. So uh, I, I'm not saying that's the exact reason, but my uh, memory serves that uh, we had trouble getting anything economic development oriented in front of some council members. Mm -hmm. But Back. we are no longer the ugly duckling. That's so. true. <laughs> For growing up, um, Council Member Dybal, did you have anything else to add? I saw. I, I just wanted to uh, okay. make the same statement that uh, Mr. Bertolino made that uh, we had some resistance from some previous council members of having anything to do with economic development as part of a city. So, uh, fortunately, uh, that's gone, and uh, we continue to have uh, excellent work being done by our economic development manager and this committee. So. And not only that, but I think if you look around at the composition of this committee as versus what it was before, mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think right there, just looking at the, the, the quality of the folks that are now on this committee, I think is it a testament to the value of this committee versus before, mm -hmm. you know, the people that were against the mayor or opposed the mayor kind of got shunted over into the committee as a, as a punishment, if you will. But when I look around now and I see, I mean, all really, really good council members, this, this committee has elevated uh, mm -hmm. itself to you know, a very high stature now. Lauren, if I may, uh, Julian, have we lost any businesses as a result of, well, we know we lost one at least as a result of COVID. Have we lost any others? That uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, during the time of COVID, yes, but not directly related to COVID. Um, the, the five I identified later during the year were, we knew Llewellyn's and Slice back in February mm -hmm. that was not COVID related. Miller mm -hmm. House 100% was all COVID related. Mm -hmm. Papa Murphy's was because of the expansion of Town Center Dental next door. Mm -hmm. um, and then there were two smaller inline tenants at the Schnucks Plaza, uh, Look After Hair Company and the Dry Cleaner, uh, mm -hmm. that both went under during COVID. And Desco Group told me were in part also due to COVID, but also were just slow business. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only five I'm aware of this entire year. Okay. Thank Which, you. Compared to the other cities, um, certainly from from what, what I've heard from the chamber meetings, is, mm -hmm. is significantly better. Did you, did you say, Julian? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so I think we still need to vote on this. If I, oh, Council Member Clark? Yes, um, I'm, I've got uh, papers here, but I'm kind of confused today. I've got them all mixed up. Um, this guide, is it part of that or does this come in later? That was part of the COVID support for Wildwood businesses. Oh, Just okay. talking about some of the support we provided to the business community during these last eight or nine months, not necessarily directly related to COVID, but something that the opportunity provided us the chance to create during the shutdown, the original shutdown. Uh, so that was one of the attachments as part of the COVID-19 support for Wildwood businesses item. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was with the old committee. So th that might be why you're seeing it for the first time. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yep. Okay, so um, I, let's uh, let's do a, all in favor of of um, making sure that we have no. Did we already vote on that? No. Nope, mm -hmm. I didn't think we did. Uh, making sure that we have regular updates every two weeks on the work session agenda. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, rolling along to the, the holiday events and decoration update, and I'll, I'll let Julian start out, and then I've got a, a couple of comments, and um, uh, Mr. Vunich, if you'd like to add anything before I uh, say anything, I would appreciate that too. Sure. Thank you, uh, Chair Edens, members of the committee. Um, this, for all intents and purposes, is to wrap a bow on the uh, holiday decorations <laughs> of sorts. I see what you did there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mike dropped. All day long. I, I heard uh, it. I am out of here. Uh, now that there's been a, there's been a fair amount of discussion over the last few committee meetings about different types of holiday programming, uh, with the potential for some type of a uh, single standing event with the WBA, which, as we know now, was not feasible, um, mm. and then several other types of whether decorations, um, self guided walk through drive through activities. Um, letters to or from Santa, other items that have been discussed. And so working with Chair Edens, we wanted the opportunity to just 
pull all those together and, and really get a good idea of what's happening this season before uh, the end of the year comes. So I provided a list of, of all the different types of activities we've discussed over these last few months, uh, whether in committee or something that had been presented by Chair Edens via email or in some of our previous discussions. Um, I'm, I'm happy to go through one by one of each of the different items. We are seeing um, the completion of some of them. Uh, as Steve had mentioned, the city hall is the exterior of city hall is now decorated. Uh, lights have been hung on the exterior of city hall. There's wreaths on the front uh, clock tower of city hall. Uh, there is the beginning of some of the decorations throughout the rest of town center. Uh, the wreaths are on the clock tower at Main Street and Taylor. And the same company that decorated the exterior of city hall has begun decorating the public plaza on Plaza Drive as well. And the WBA has begun selling, or I guess registering tr uh, trees to its members for individual members of the WBA to decorate their own trees surrounding mm -hmm. that same plaza. Uh, out of 28 trees, I believe 23 have already been registered. Um, so we are seeing some progress um, being completed for each of these items. Um, I, most of them are either already underway or just as far as unknown, not knowing if it's something we're going to do or not. Um, I also included a copy of the Department of Planning's memo that was provided at last night's council meeting regarding the holiday decorations for town center uh, since it pertained to this item. Um, but I will defer to everybody else for any questions um, at this time. Well, I, I have three questions, but I just want to reiterate again how excited I am for some lights in town center and so those trees that I've seen so far that the WBA has done look great. So if you're watching at home, we'd love to have you drive through town center, um, especially as we get farther into December where the trees are decorated. Uh, so my first, um, I'll just I'll just ask them all at once and then and then hopefully um, Julian and, and Joe can answer. But my, my first question on the Santa mailbox totally understand why, why staff moved to, to digital uh, with, with COVID. My question was um, thinking about the budget next year. So I know it's the second year in a row we've, we've tried to find money for a physical one, is if we don't anticipate having money for something physical next year, can we go ahead and buy the mailbox and, and put it back for next year? Does, does that make sense to go ahead and purchase it this year? Madam Maybe Chair, if you don't mind. Pardon me. Nope, go for it. Um, we had a discussion recently, the, the department heads along with Mr. Cross and given the CARES Act funding, the general consensus was is if we're going to purchase something of a capital type, this is the time to do it, not next year. And so I would defer to Mr. Cross to correct me if I've stated that wrong. Uh, no, Mr. Vunich has stated it correctly that um, when these types of things have come up, um, the recommendation has been <clears throat> um, if it's not something that's that's way out of line, um, it's better to uh, spend those funds in 2020 versus 2021. Um, so yes, if there's an opportunity, I'd say let's go ahead and do it. Okay, perfect. Well, based on the actions of old council and this council, I, I don't think we need a, a motion to, to reapprove something that, that we've um, already approved, but I can't remember if it's the city of Baldwin, but I believe it is. I, I know they purchased one this year and stuck it in a park. I don't know if it's something that's worth copying, but it sounded like Kathy was already doing research. So I'm excited to see that we're still going to still gonna purchase one. Um, I Do we have an estimate on the cost? Ms. Sarnett is uh, working on those estimates. Uh, I've asked her to call Baldwin and see if they could give us a lead on where they got theirs and the cost associated with it. And so as soon as she returns from the holiday, I'll be able to give you more information and we'll probably just send you an email if that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe they found a great weatherproof you know option. So mm -hmm. no need to, to reinvent the wheel. Is this um, a, are we talking about a, a, like a full scale um, mailbox that you would see? If that's the case, I'm wondering. Um, I had a brief conversation with our mail carrier. Um, you know, now they don't have any spares there at the at the Grover Post Office, but I wonder. Um, if, if we maybe, and, and this was just a conversation at the mailbox with her, um, but I'm um, wondering if, if you're talking about purchasing a surplus one, I, I did call, um, the postmaster general for the area 
I believe mm -hmm. that's the title. And after 9-11, they will no longer sell or give out their mailboxes that okay. have been retired. Yep. Hmm. But great minds do think alike and uh, has, has been explored. Um, I hope that we can get a, a couple storefronts painted, but certainly if we can't, that's okay. Um, I, I, I can't remember uh, Council Member Clark and Nihan if you were part of the discussions before, but I had included at last um, committee some, some pictures of what Columbia looks like downtown uh, for homecoming. And it's, it's volunteers that, that paint and decorate all the business windows uh, downtown. And it, it's, it's really charming and very cost effective. Um, I had two more questions and then I, I will um, open it up. One uh, was on the on Toys for Tots. And I, I had a little bit of, of confusion um, because I was under the impression that they had just moved to a virtual campaign this year. However, Metro West Fire Station in Ward 2 has a rather large sign out that they are a location. Um, and so if we're not going to be a drop off location, my thought was maybe we could go ahead and publicize that Metro West on Clayton is. And I think Metro West, uh, the station three in town center might also be based yeah. off the interactive map. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, Mr. Vunich. Uh, typically in past years, the St. Louis County Police Department has coordinated Toys for Tots here at City Hall. I didn't know it was an item of interest, so I would have talked to Captain Mundell, but we can follow up with him. That would be great. Um, I, I dropped a toy off in the box that we had last year in City Hall. Just wasn't sure what kind of, kind of foot traffic that we wanted this year at City Hall. So with, without ob objection um, that from the committee, it would be great if you could explore that. Yes, Councilmember Dabo. Is there any way we could put the uh, container for drop off uh, in the vestibule between the doors or those doors are locked during non-business hours? Um, I don't Actually, know if we could put it outside or not. That's well, we've been doing that competition, feed the masses with the other municipalities out in the West County area. Mm -hmm. And we've been accommodating people coming into the vestibule to drop off food and other non-perishables. Okay. And I think we could do that easily if you'd like, Ms. Dodwell. Okay. I think that would be excellent. Mm -hmm. And we'll just make sure we advertise it a, a, a lot this year and on, on social media. I know that the, the charities are really hurting this year with a loss of revenue. So mm -hmm. 2020 has been a it's been a year. Um, and then I, I wanted to, to gauge the, the department's contest um, on the department's feelings on, on the gingerbread house contest that was done by the WBA last year. Um, if you weren't at Winterfest, it, it was successful. People did drive their, their gingerbread houses down and participated in it. Um, I thought this year there's really two options. One would be to have some folks um, submit their pictures of ones at their house safely uh, to the WBA or to the city. And uh, we, could, we could have a social media campaign about that. You know, another option would be to do some sort of drop off and, and put them on a, on a physical table that could take place over one to two weeks uh, in, in time. Uh, my concern was once you, once you get tradition started, you, you, have to, you have to get it going for a couple of years so that it sticks. And I, I just wanted to, to get something that we could call the second annual. Councilmember Dodwell? I'm, I would be a little bit concerned about having physical foodstuffs brought into City Hall. And I'm sure nobody would mean to do anything, but th that's a harbinger of yes. infection. And so I would tend to say the video, uh, the virtual method of them being able to post a photo, I think would be the best uh, thing to do in today's current climate. I, I agree. Is there any appetite for continuing the virtual gingerbread house contest with the WBA? Yes, Mr. Cross. I was just going to say, would it be okay if I took a picture of City Hall and then photoshopped it to look like a gingerbread house? Would that be okay? <laughs> well, let me tell you, I tried. As far as I can go on the baking part. <laughs> I, I tried to build one last year, and it was the first time I hadn't done a pre prefab house and decorated it. And I made City Hall, y'all, but it fell apart. And <laughs> <laughs> it 
which is it collapsed. Uh, you know, things were not plumb and square. They go into the oven that way. They don't come out that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if I can get mine together, my city hall will be your city hall, but I don't <laughs> literally think it will come together. So uh, if, if that's um, okay with, with uh, the committee, then maybe Julian and I can talk to the, the WBA a little bit more. Maybe we could arrange, you know, a drawing if you just entered. Rather, last year, I believe we did age categories. I think it was just one. I think we only had about one. six gingerbread houses that were turned in at the mm-hmm. event. And one mm-hmm. was a masterpiece. So the competition wasn't all that fair. It was a village. <laughs> Maybe it was. That's, I thought it was more houses than it was. Um, okay. So uh, do we need a formal motion? I, I don't think we do. Okay. Um, and my, my, last, my last thing I was going to bring up, um, I, I was just a, a little bit confused for, for whatever reason. I thought that um, when we decided not to do an in-person winter fest that we would still potentially be doing Santa online. So um, I either misunderstood or, or didn't, didn't make that clear. I don't, I know we canceled the other one. So I'm not sure, is there any, any appetite for a Zoom Santa or is that even possible at this point? Not all at once. I defer to the department and city administrator. Well, go ahead, Julian. Um, I, well, it was discussed um, okay. at a department head meeting, um, and and I and I think erring on the side of caution. I think it was probably something. If I recall, if I'm recalling, and Julian, please correct me. But if I'm recalling the conversation correctly. Um, I, th- I think we felt that probably it was not something that w- that we were going to be able to pull off, but maybe my memory is not quite correct, Julian. No, you are correct. And my interpretation is that when we left the single in-person event and went to a uh, more open-ended seasonal um, festival that lasts for over a month instead of just one evening, that it would be up to the individual to explore the, the grounds and drive through the lights and that there wouldn't be a specific date and time for any type of an event. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and knowing the, the full scope of holiday programming that we've identified tonight, um, you know, I, my recommendation is, is not to have a virtual Zoom Santa, but the, I could just, that could just be me. Councilmember Dodwell. I I tend to agree. I think we've got um, the gingerbread house. We've got the holiday boutique going on, um, the walk around to see everything in town center. Um, So I I think that gives us a significant amount of um, winter fest activity for this year. Okay. Um, Mr. Greenwich, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, other than Santa Howard was calling me fairly regularly, wanting to know if we were going to use him or not. I got the impression that outside St. Louis County, he is in much demand because they were still doing in-person events. So I just felt that based upon the conversation we had at the department head meeting, and the direction I thought we left the last meeting with that it was okay to release him. He was very appreciative of us doing that because obviously this is his season to make as much as he can to carry him over during the holiday, past the holidays. So as I say, he was anxious to find us, find an answer and I didn't feel like I could delay till tonight's meeting. That's understandable. Well, th- those are essentially my questions. Does anybody have any other questions or comments about, um, yeah, Councilmember Clark. Um, Yeah, I just had a, a question. Is there something that we can do as um, members of the committee to help you with writing letters from Santa or setting things up? Uh, I know that there's a lot of things going on with the department and um, maybe some mm-hmm. of the the menial tasks I can help you with if mm-hmm. if you need something like that. Very kind of you to suggest. And the actual Santa letters are generated off of our website. And for the most part, 
Chris Parker, our administrative assistant, and Bree Kelchin, our recreation specialist, fill the envelopes. In fact, they've got them pretty much set up. Uh, they're in the boxes just waiting to have the letter placed and then the, the stickers we send. We did this for many, many years and it was always pretty successful and it's surprising where we get requests from. We were plotting it one year on the map of the United States and I think we had 30 different states that uh, had sent requests for sample letters. Oh wow. my goodness. Mm -hmm. So it was popular and I'm not sure particularly why it stopped. It's one of those things, but um, as I say, I, if, if there's an available tree, maybe city council would like to decorate a tree. I would do it. Me too. Yeah, that would be nice. We have a lot of stuff in the corral that we've used over the years to maybe give you a head start on it, but. As I say that, um, and I think staff is still intending to do the interior of the city hall, despite you know the limited access to it, just so that there is a festive feel for those people that do come to city hall. Mm -hmm. They Council need that. Council Member Clark, it's um, one more question. When we um, when we decorate, are we do we purchase those decorations, or are they just? Um, rented and they put them up and take them down. Uh, the reason I ask this is I was down in West Plains um, just last week and because uh, I had to take my mom to the doctor. So I drove through there in um, all places where I grew up around and I saw the same, the same decorations as when I was a kid, the same wreaths <laughs> that they take down and put up every year. And it brought some kind of an emotional um, connection to me. And I thought, you know, with Wildwood, it's such a family, um, a place where we really love and we love the city, not just we live here. So something like that, I think would be really nice to have um, decorations for the holiday that kids now will come back and, um, you know, in 50 years later or 60, <laughs> whatever the case may be, and see them again. Just a thought. And these were out, outdoor decorations? Yeah, these were outdoor decorations. These um, wreaths they put up on every one of the uh, power, uh, the, the, the poles along the roadway downtown, and then they've got the square. So it's mm -hmm. a real little old town. And um, yeah, they put them up. It's still, it, it, they may have got new bows on them over the years, but um, my mom said that, yeah, they use the same ones every year. Maybe um, one of these years we'll be able to afford some, some banners from the light poles too that, that have, a, have a Christmas theme because I know we put some, some wreaths up already. Um, and I will, I will tell you, um, I have now taken to, to yelling at the Hallmark movie because I've, I've seen the bid prices for Christmas decorations and there's small towns and I'm going, you can't afford that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't afford that tree. This is movie magic. I know what the bid is. <laughs> but, but I think, I think that would be nice. And certainly one year, maybe next year, what we could do too is maybe we could get a second tree in city hall on and, and perhaps in the chambers and we can invite members of the community to bring a special ornament, maybe one that kids handcraft or just something that means something mm -hmm. to them and help decorate the tree. So it's really their tree too. That would be nice. Lauren, I must say that I yell at the Hallmark movies as well, but for different reasons, like, can they come up with a different plot? It's the no, same. never. It's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of <laughs> widows and amnesia. And <laughs> you know, Judy, Judy and I, I mean, it'll be two minutes into the thing and we'll go, well, let's see, how do you think this is going to end? Is she going to argue with him and then they'll get together and then they will kiss at the very end. <laughs> and, then, and then the actors are confusing because they're, they're, they're just repeats, so. Right. Um, but, but if there's anything else, you know, too, I, I would just say with the mailbox is certainly if we have money for other decorations for next year or for internal, you know, whether that be swags on the dais or extra trees, I, like you said, this is, this is the year to kind of put it back. 
I think regarding uh, Councilmember Clark's question about if we own or are renting the decorations, I know Joe and his department had worked with the uh, outside vendor to arrange the decorations. I think he had, probably has the, the answer if we own them or are we renting them. This year we're renting them, except the large wreaths on the clock tower. Uh, we pay that company to store those for us. So those are repeats each year. Um, but other than that, we do have a lot of garland lights and bows in the corral that we use for the roundabout in parts of Taylor Road. So we have a good stockpile, so to speak. Um, but again, like I say, we've not found the what I would consider the magic formula that really makes Taylor Road and, and much of the area jump out and say, this is really nice. Um, I think we're getting closer this year and hopefully now, each year we'll get a little better. It's, it's a start. So in, any more questions on, on the holiday event updates? I do have two, two brief updates that weren't included in the memo. Um, one of which is on the painting storefront windows. Since the time of writing this uh, report for the committee, I did send out the request to all the business owners um, asking which businesses would like their storefronts to be decorated. And since Friday, I heard back from 13 already that want to be decorated um, pretty quickly too. I, I intentionally told them it was first come first serve because we have limited number of students that are going to be able to help us out. So if they wanted their chance of being decorated, let us know now. Um, so at this point, we have at least 13 businesses that, that want their windows to be decorated. Um, also at this time, we have two students. So they're gonna have their hands full. Um, I identified in the report, but St. Louis Community College, because they're entirely 100% online, they cannot do it this season. Um, Lafayette High School, the art department wants to do it. It just depends on their students if they're available and interested. And the art teacher has already provided the names of two students that want to help out. I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get additional students to make the workload a little bit easier on each of them. I'd hate to see two students decorate 25 windows. Um, but at this point, we'll just take it as it comes and see how many students we get and how many businesses we have. But I told them all it was first come first serve. So however many students we have, we'll ask them how many windows can you decorate and take the first, whatever number it is, 10, 12, 15 on the list. Did you approach Eureka High School too, Julian? We just did Lafayette right now. Since it's in the city, we haven't asked Eureka yet. What about even like Crestview or Rockwood Valley? Like maybe some eighth graders or something? Might even be a little more likely to think that's fun and cool than a high schooler, maybe. I don't know. Sure. We're happy to ask if the committee chooses. Mm -hmm. I, I think at the, if, if we only have two students, let's start with Eureka's art department. Um, and uh, uh, especially because I think the younger that we go, we'll, we'll pro the, they would want an adult present and that's one more, more body on a limited capacity of a business. Um, and then if, if we don't get good response, would any of the, the former plain air contestants be interested? That's a good question. I was thinking something similar that we have that email list from all the plain air participants and ask them if they'd be interested to do a little community outreach. That would that would be great. I, I would love to get every business that's that's requested it done, but we'll we'll leave it in, in, in Julian's hands and, and see who we who we get. And then the uh, the last remaining item I had, I didn't include it in the memo, but one of the other uh, ideas that Chair Evans had had was engaging the owners of each of our shopping centers to ask them if they would also like to decorate their own centers for this season. Uh, we did send out the request to all those owners and we're waiting to hear back. Um, I know one of them already told us that they were planning some uh, pretty basic type decorations for their center, just given uh, cost and, and where we are today. But uh, we did send out that request. So we might see more start to come in as well. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for, for doing that. A lot of people that, you know, or some of them aren't they managed by hedge funds as well as well out of state. Yeah. It's still worth a shot. Okay, any more discussion? All right, um, the December meeting date is up for action. I certainly think we could cancel it as we have done the last two years. It's at an inconvenient time, but if there's appetite to reschedule it, that's something we can do as well. So I'd love to have a motion on the floor. Um, Council Member I, I would move that we uh, omit the uh, December meeting. Do we have a second? 
Seconded by Council Member Nyhan. Any discussion on the motion to cancel our December meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any against? Thank you. All right, moving on to for information, uh, the economic development manager's report. And Julian, thank you for adding the, uh, the chart that was requested. And would you like to say anything about it? Sure, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in line with the previous month's reports, this identifies the highlights of the past month's activity. Uh, due to the request at the October committee meeting, we included the beginnings of some data metrics for the committee just to show uh, a little bit more as far as data, the activity that occurred in the last month and also over the last few years. Um, this was just a start. We can, we can always add on to it depending on the level of detail that the committee would like to see. Um, some of this information we keep on, our, on an annual basis. We keep track of to know our vacancy rates each year, not necessarily each month, but this is something we can certainly track each month to show a little bit more um, variety of data uh, for the committee at each month's meeting. I did include a brief table showing for the month of November, but including some data from the last two months as well. Uh, the total number of new businesses, how many have closed, what the impact is on our business inventory, both for this month and also for year to date, just to show that for the year 2020, how many new businesses have opened, uh, how many additional businesses have either relocated, expanded, reinvested in their facility. Uh, as we talked about earlier, how many businesses that we know have closed during 2020, and then what that has done to our total business inventory for the city, um, just so that you all can see in numbers, the impact of, of the business community in Wildwood. And then separately from that, when we talked at the October meeting, we listed off just verbally a few figures as far as how we've reduced vacancy rates, both for retail centers and office space um, significantly since 2016. But given the uh, events of 2020, that our focus has definitely shifted uh, during 2020, more from recruitment to retention. So showing that while we've leveled off for 2020, that our numbers are still uh, far below where they were four years ago when this program first started, uh, being a good thing as far as those numbers being declining to show just where the vacancy rates have declined over the last four years. Um, I did have a figure from 2018, which is the last time we provided a, a metrics update to this committee. Uh, so I just pulled those numbers from that report from two years ago. So you can see how those numbers have changed in the last four years. Um, I'd be happy to identify additional data, different data. Um, this was uh, just our interpretation of, of what the committee had asked for at the last meeting for some charts and graphs to have a better physical idea of, of the work of this committee and the impact on the city's businesses. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about it. Council Member Dabwa. I'd like to request that um, these two, um, the table and then your um, graphic there, um, be reviewed at the next city council meeting so that we can inform all of city council what the current um, rate is in Wildwood. And I would hope that each of us would be rather proud of those numbers uh, and proud of our business owners for ensuring that we um, keep and retain uh, businesses in the city of Wildwood, even during this pandemic. I, I think that's a great testament to the work that Julian has done to reach out to these business owners and be a resource on a continual basis. So, um, so Council I, Member, are you making the motion? I'm making a motion that we okay. do that. Mm -hmm. that we place this, the, these business metrics on the next council meeting agenda for review or a quick two minute discussion from Julian and then he can answer any questions. And if I might just chime in, mm -hmm. um, as part of the monthly manager's report, this was the document that the committee authorized us to submit to council each month uh, earlier mm -hmm. on in this meeting. Okay. So the, these tables will be part of that report that's provided to the council at each month's meeting. Okay. okay. I, I still would like you though, to be able to have a segment within the city council meeting when they're presented to be able to update council members who are not part of our committee on how these numbers were obtained, what they represent. I think all of us have a good understanding of them now, but 
I just want to make sure if council members have any questions as to how to read uh, things that we give them the opportunity to ask those questions. Council member Bertolino. Yeah, uh, Julian, quick question. What is, when you say total business inventory, mm -hmm. are, are that just the total number of licensed businesses within the city? Correct. Uh, commercial, um, medical, um, anything not home occupied. If it's a traditional storefront retail or office that we keep track of, that's the total inventory. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vernich. Oh. Uh, I'll defer to Ms. Clark since she's on the committee. I, I'm going to change the subject. Did you have something on that subject? Well, I think the graphics are really impressive and do a, a lot to tell the story much better than words. And so I was thinking, could you do the unemployment rate as a graph as well? I think it gets buried at the bottom of the report, but that's pretty impressive that Wildwood's kind of gotten back to pre-COVID already, so to speak. And the, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which we pull our unemployment rates from, uh, we can easily export a, a graph showing the trends for the last year, 10 years, however long we'd like to. And we can just also attach that graph uh, to this report. That'll be the full MSA though, right? Well, we can, do, can we either do it for the city of Wildwood, we can do it for St. Louis Metro, we can do it for national, um, because the city of Wildwood is over 25,000 people, the BLS keeps track of us specifically. Okay, let's compare it to all three if that's okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Nice graphics though, Clark? Julian. Thank you. Council member Clark. So mine has, my, my, my comment has to do with the graphics also. And um, you know, I love the at a glance um, graphics in, in anything. And that leads me to um, ask if there's another graphic you could add. The, uh, on all of these, um, there's a lot of things on here and, uh, just looking at it, I don't know when all of this happened, when all, when it was, um, implemented or it began, is there any way to have some kind of a, a timeline we can look at so we can see where most of the, um, the efforts, you know, is it mostly in the summertime? Is it mostly in November? Uh, it, if there's a, a time that it's more um, concentrated, that we have um, business opportunities and um, activities, I think that would help us to plan if we could see what we've done like over this year or next year. When, when you say efforts, Council Member Clark, are you looking for action that we have specifically taken as a department or are you looking to see, for example, most businesses uh, tend to open in a certain season? Can you elaborate on exactly what you're looking for? Sure, if we took this document and we took each one of these line items and put them on a timeline and you don't have it like, you know, January 10th, this happened, but you would have it over a span of time. And so if this was all on a timeline that we could see how much of these activities that are called activities, whatever, whatever it is, if it's to do with the business or if it's something that, that Julian is doing himself, if we could see how much activity is going on over the year, I think it would help to plan Hmm. I'm not sure how well some of this content would convert into. Well, that I, I, we could do it. But it's, you know, and that's just a suggestion so that it's easier to see what's going on and we can see what, um, where the most activity is. Council member Dabwa. So council member um, Clark, are you talking about, say we, we, we've got several different categories on this spreadsheet that Julian's put together. So if we look at the new business activity, you're wanting a timeline as, that shows a graphic of town centered dental opened on this date and fixed supply expanded on that date and 
Um, Wildwood Pub and Grill will launch on this date. I, all of these are so different in activity. I'm trying to figure out how we would put that into the chart that you're talking about. Well, um, not so much what they did as when we, um, when we worked on this. When did this open? When did we open this activity? When did we start on this? Oh, when did this you mean become? activity as in category? So when did we start tracking new business? When did we start tracking the town center dental? Okay, so they, they said, um, this is when they decided to um, completed build out last week or their, when they decided to build out their new expanded retail space. Okay, so we started on a, a date that they opened up the new place, right? So when did we get involved with this? When um, the Letty Lou's. When you say involved, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to make sure. I, when you say involved, what do you mean by the word involved? We put it on our chart. Okay. So when we became, when we provided information, but didn't take action. Right. And then when are we done? When, when did we start that activity on our chart? We could just say on our chart. And when did we stop that activity on our chart? When were we done with that? My potential solution for this, and this is just me thinking out loud, is um, uh, many of these items, to Councilmember Clark's point, takes a few months for full completion, um, mm -hmm. really from inception of an idea through any approvals or permitting process until they get to the point where they can actually start work. However long the process takes to complete that work and then open, you know, each of these things, as all things do, takes a significant period of time. So we, mm -hmm. we do see some repetition of items and, and specific businesses because of how long certain items take. So the activity update is whatever the current status is of that specific item. Maybe instead of a, a monthly um, tabulation of that, it could be part of the last report of the year is kind of part of a year in review. So for that last month's report for the year 2020, we show during that year's period of time on a, a timeline, you know, a, some type of a bar, some type of a, a line for each one of those new businesses or business expansions of sorts to show the period of time that it took for them to get from inception to completion, um, just as part of that year look back. I, yeah. I think that would be better because we do not have control over these individual entities' timelines. We're not managing their project um, so, I mean, Julian doesn't have that kind of input or participation in their activities to get themselves up and going. So we're, each one of these has a different timeline for their particular tasks that they've assigned themselves. So I think a summary at the end of the year makes more sense as to who's opened and what Julian was speaking to. I'm sorry. No, nope. all right, Council Member Bertolino. Yeah, uh, Teresa, if I'm understanding you right, I'm just use, your, use this example of the town center dental. Were you looking for something that said uh, on that activity, um, it was first, re we first reported on the dental build out um, March of 2020. That was the first notice we took at that. And now we're reporting that the completion of the build out is now November or whatever. Is that what you're looking at? That is what I'm looking at. Yes, I'm okay. looking at what, how long does it take us to do these things? Because we start doing the planning um, for the next year or we take on more, um, um, we, we have these things coming in, we can sort of, predict how long something is going to take us to complete by what has already happened. And, um, the yearly, yes, yearly is great because then you look at it over the last year, how long did everything take to, to complete? And then we can predict what 
um, how much activity is going to, uh, or how much work it's going to take for Julian or other people in the department um, based on that. I, I guess the, the, the word that we're all struggling with is the use of complete right, because this is really about monitoring and they come to us mm -hmm. with their own schedule for permits or for getting loans. So how long it takes is not necessarily a reflection of the department's efficiency. I'm not saying it's the department's efficiency. I'm just saying it helps the department with their plan. What do you mean by planning? Because some of this is for information. Well, they have other things going on, right? So they have to plan around what they've got going on here. And Julian can, um, you know, it just helps you predict what's going to happen when another, another office opens up. So I can predict based on history, how much time it's taken before. Okay. Um, I, I, are, are, you, are you okay with an end year report then? Would, would that suffice? No, that's what I would, that's, that's what I would be looking at. Uh, at something that okay. shows for the last year so that, I mean, it's not so much for me as I think it would be a good thing for the department to be able to see it. And just as a prediction for the next year. Okay, Council Member Dabwell. I understand what you're saying, Council Member Clark. Um, unfortunately, we're not managing the implementation projects ourselves. We are a resource to assist with them as needed, but Letty Luz is an example. We've been waiting for Letty Luz to reopen for a year now. And we could have predicted that Letty Luz would open in six months, uh, but it's still not open yet. And that has nothing to do with any responsibility that Julian has or the department has. Um, it's strictly a function of that business's choices and what they want to do. So um, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm just confused on how, how the department as an entity can guess what a business owner is going to put together for their timeline. Let, let's do this because we, we've got the end of the year year coming up. Um, so we'll, we'll see what Julian puts together. And then if it answers your questions, great. And if it doesn't, then we'll, then we'll go back to see if we better understand what you're asking for. Will, will that work? Sure. Okay, great. Um, so we don't have anything ready for action um, in terms of other business news and updates. Uh, Julian, do you have anything? I think the only thing that I was going to identify is uh, our next meeting, since we canceled December, will be on January 26th um, at 6 o'clock p.m., I believe. I think that's what it was. I believe now, it is. Now I want to double check. <laughs> yes, yes, please do. And, and while Julian's doing that, I, I did think about what we talked about in council yesterday and certainly council member uh, Remy's thoughts. Um, one of the things I, I think I'll, I'll do, and I'll, I'll talk to Julian about this, is start kind of a, a list of ideas that we have thrown around over the years, um, why they were taken up, why they weren't, uh, maybe a column for who suggested them. Because I think what happens is elected officials come and go, um, and this committee changes who's on it. And sometimes uh, what that means is the the real the wheel rebuilds itself and restarts uh, and it doesn't have to every time so for example one of the things council member remy brought up has, has something that we have talked about before um I, i'd like to start a running tab that we can kind of pass on and pass the torch on as as we evolve and then present that and bring that back to you guys on the next agenda 
and we'll add on to it as a as a rolling list unless there's something so controversial that we would we would kind of keep it off. If that sounds good, I think that'll help kind of address uh, some of the things that were brought up. Julian, and I, I think kind of to that point, um, and, and most of you know this already, but the we love this term in the last two days: strategic plan document. Um, <laughs> Yes. For the for the city's economic development program, uh, this was now almost five years ago in, in, in 2016 when the city contracted with Housley Levine and Associates out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. the, the Our working document, the strate strategic plan for the city's program uh, was adopted with a five-year uh, lifetime, life period. Um, in the document, we've talked about this in the last year, the city's economic development guide um, is intended to have a complete update in 2021. So in less than a month and a half, uh, we'll be in 2021. And our, our job, I think, as this committee will be to review and complete update that document. Mm -hmm. So I think we will be doing a lot of our own strategic planning as part of that review and update of that guide, which really directs this, the implementation of this program. Um, so we can identify everybody's priorities and programs and what everybody would like to see completed as part of that review as we're updating that document in 2021. Excellent. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay, well, it sounds like we're set to have a, a pretty productive January with some more information coming back and then we'll pick up efforts for um, our, our tourism uh, program after the new year. And January so. 26th is at 5.30 p.m. Um, because mm -hmm. Martin Luther King holiday is on the Monday prior the 26th is double booked with Econo Development at 5.30 and Planning and Parks at seven o'clock. Yeah. It's gonna be a double header. All right, guys, well, seeing, seeing nothing else then, uh, can I get a, a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Made by Council Member Bertolino, seconded by Council Member Dodwell, non-debatable. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I voted I as well. Well, once again, thanks for, for a great meeting and um, see you uh, for anybody have meetings next week. I'll, I'll see you. See you guys next week. Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah,